Nahmadu wa nusalli ala rasul karim Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim I don't know if you'd had the feeling that I often get when the, the media or maybe somebody in a book is covering a place uh, that uh, you're very familiar with and uh, the person, the, the writer or the journalist gets things completely wrong and you get that sinking feeling, gosh, if everything that is covered in the media or written in books or written in this particular book is so inaccurate, then I might as well stop reading. I might as well stop tuning in. Well, I got that sort of feeling this morning, listening to a uh, report on, uh, it was actually on the BBC uh, from our own correspondent program. It could have been anywhere, you know, I'm not a BBC basher, as you know, I used to work at the BBC and I, uh, I, uh, I acquired uh, a large part, uh, most of my media experience uh, working at the BBC, so I'm not going to start bashing the BBC. I think very highly of the BBC. But, you know, when you criticize, you don't criticize. Uh, criticism is not a negative thing. Criticism is a positive action. And we've been in, into that also in uh, our talks. So I'd like to deal first with what the things uh, which were right about this report. Uh, one thing was that, uh, yes, there was a cold uh, snap, a cold, you can say, a spell. Uh, it was a bit more than a snap in uh, January, which lasted um, three weeks or so, uh, in January, <coughs> which uh, was the coldest spell. Residents of Tashkent were saying that this was the coldest spell that they had experienced since 1969, people of my sort of age. And uh, uh, it was much like people in England remember the uh, cold spell of 1962-63. Uh, they still remember that, and there hasn't been a cold spell uh, like it ever since 1962-63. In this age of global warming, we probably wouldn't mind another one. But anyway, but uh, so, and yet another good thing about the report was that there was an energy shortage in the, during this, uh, during this uh, cold spell, uh, the freezing spell, uh, where the temperatures didn't get above freeze, freezing, uh, often minus 25, minus 20. Uh, so uh, in, uh, during this um, uh, cold spell, there was energy, there was gas sh shortage. And uh, because most of Uzbekistan's uh, energy, uh, electricity comes from gas, uh, there's um, uh, also electricity shortage. Uh, uh, and it was, as we will see later in this uh, talk, it was pretty uh, localized. Uh, it wasn't uh, across the board. It wasn't everywhere. And that's an important point. But yes, uh, there was some electricity and gas shortages. So again, uh, coming to, you know, the source of our, our talks, we, you know, we're not just giving talks about what's covered in the media. We're looking at uh, media issues in the light of Quran and Hadith, in the light of uh, Islamic uh, scriptures. Uh, and so uh, I, I would like to just quote the uh, verse of the Quran that uh, this talk uh, very much uh, stems from the, that the verse of the Quran. They take things out of context. So this report took things out of uh, context. So uh, I, I just to put this taking out of context into context, I would like to just uh, mention uh, what uh, a mentor of mine and the person when I qualified from uh, Madrasa some 40 years ago in India, then I did my apprenticeship, my media apprenticeship, you could say, with an Islamic scholar uh, in uh, Delhi. And uh, he often uh, used to say about uh, communal riots in India, I remember his actual words in uh, Urdu, uh, this, uh, that these communal riots, but I'll translate it to save time, because you know I like to keep my talks as short as possible that uh, these communal riots happen in one particular district, but the media makes it sound as if uh, the communal riots are everywhere. So this is a very important point. This is exactly what this, uh, uh, this uh, report did as far as the electricity and gas outages and the resultant protests in Uzbekistan were concerned. So, uh, this, I, I, I alluded to the matter earlier, this problem of electricity and gas shortages 
First of all, the uh, cold spell itself was limited to three weeks of January. Uh, the uh, 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 and um, so it it doesn't continue out till now. Remember, the it was uh, broadcast now, and I told you it was broadcast this morning. It was broadcast that report on the morning of uh, March the second. So they'd missed a whole month of February, definitely, and at least six weeks. It was at least six weeks out of date. So that point, if you're going to make a report which is six weeks out of date, you have to make clear that this is uh, six weeks ago. It made it, the, the report made it sound as if uh, this problem was continue, uh, it was still continuing. So a problem that was limited in time and space was made to sound very general as if it was still continuing and it wasn't. It, may, it was made to sound as if uh, this, uh, this uh, electricity and gas shortages were still continuing and were everywhere, certainly in the capital Tashkent, which was uh, not the case. Uh, people I know in Tashkent uh, didn't experience such those difficulties. I know two families, and uh, neither of those families experienced uh, such uh, difficulties. Uh, though they did say that there were other places in Tashkent where they were experiencing such difficulties. So that uh, matter has to be uh, made clear. So it was a lot of exaggeration, a lot of generalization, a lot of uh, taking uh, something out of its context, taking an issue out of its context, in this case gas and electricity shortage, and making it sound much more uh, uh, across the board than it actually was. So why does the uh, why does the media do this? Well, uh, it's um, the reason is because of sensationalism. You know, because they have to uh, you know make something sound spicy in order to get people to tune in. So that's a big problem with the media nowadays. And hopefully, we'll get to look at that in our next talk.